Okay, so we'll go to uh, to the north of, of Europe, uh, more precisely Great Britain, to to discuss fractals. Now, th this the problem of fractals really began to be raised in the 1930s, uh, as more and more people were trying to study the the shape of the British island and particle. They wanted to know what's, what's the, the length of the British coastline. Doesn't seem like a difficult question, right? So how do you measure a distance? You want to measure the distance, the length of this British coastline. How do you measure a distance? Well, one way of doing that is to have someone walking the distance and to count the number of steps he would have made, and hence deducing you know, by a mathematical trick called multiplication, uh, you deduce the total distance uh, one would have walked. So you could actually do that. Now, uh, if, uh, you, uh, if I do that, it would take a lot of time. So let's imagine a, a giant doing that. Uh, say the giant makes te steps which are 200 kilometers long. So giants would walk all over the British coastline. And it would take him about 2,400 2, kilometers to, to go all around. But if you take a smaller giant, a smaller giant would make steps, for instance, 100 kilometers long. He would have to be zigzagging more. So instead of kind of jumping all over, he would be zigzagging, which would make his walk longer. He would have actually walked 2,800 2, kilometers. And if you take a smaller giant, it would take him even longer. In fact, this distance doesn't seem to convert to anything. It really goes to infinity. The smaller the person, the longer he'll have to walk. And this is very disturbing, because it, it seems like the British island, which is really rather simple looking, has a perimeter which is infinite. That's disturbing. The shape is, seems, really seems finite, and yet it seems finite, and, and yet the length of the perimeter is infinite. Uh, so this was very disturbing for mathematicians at the time. And that's because they didn't have the right language to talk about these objects. And then came Benoît Mandelbrot, well, the French mathematician, in the 1960s, 70s. He understood that the, the, the problem of these shapes is that the more you zoom in, the, you didn't get simpler shapes as you zoom in, which were the case in normal shapes. Like if you zoom in on a torus, you eventually see a plane. It's simple. But here, the more you zoom in, well, you don't seem to get any simple pattern after that. And this, this, this was a hurdle for all the mathematicians. But Mandelbrot saw that this could be interpreted as a similarity in all scales. So in certain sense, no matter how much you zoom in on the, the British coastline, it will still have the same sort of shape. And that's the idea of fractals, self-similarity. Uh, when he, when he, so he wrote an article, a paper, he, he sent it, and he was refused, uh, and it was rejected. And that's because it's, it seems like he was talking about some weird objects. Yet, in fact, it really seems that nature is using this kind of language all the time. You can look at blood vessels, trees, rivers, leaves, or have these sort of patterns. And what's amazing with these patterns is that with a few simple rules, so here, is, for instance, is the Mandelbrot set. It's very simple, simple rules of addition and multiplication in the complex plane. Just then checking if these patterns go to, from this, uh, have this sort of recursive algorithm, just by checking if it goes to infinity or not, or not you get this extremely complicated shape. And this shape is fairly it's easier to understand when you have this concept of self-similarity and the language of fractals. And fractals are, are really amazing because they are very nice looking and you can produce amazing <coughs> posters with them. I don't know if you guys want to see another fractal? Do you guys want to see another fractal? Yes. Do you guys want to see another fractal? Yes. <laughs> okay, here's one of my favorite. It's an image from the movie Up by Pixar, and it's been generated by a lot of fractals. Because fractals seems to be the right language to describe tree, forests, mountains, or clouds. 
All of this is based on the idea of cell similarity and fractals. And this was something that was discovered by Lauren Carpenter in the, in the 1980s. He basically read through Mandelbrot's uh, uh, Mandelbrot wrote a book after that, and he, he read through uh, the book uh, by Mandelbrot, and he kind of applied the idea to, to generate a mountain. So he, he was kind of playing with that. And then he gener generated the mountains, and he was just amazed by this. And he went on co-founding Pixar. So the competitive advantage of Pixar really is the mastery of fractals. Now, there's something extremely puzzling about fractals. It seems that they are so complicated when you look at them. There's so much information in that. And yet, it's generated with a few simple rules. So a fractal, does it have a lot of information or just a little of information? Uh, that's a puzzling question, uh, which is us to go to Asia to talk about information.